This episode of Overreaction is brought to you by EMT Racing. Motocross fans, it's time to overreact, and yes, I'm going to let you all overreact, okay? I know we are one day late, but look, I was in the Pacific Northwest, not at Washougal, but I was with this guy. That's Carson Brown. There was cameras, there was bikes, there was mics. You know what that means, but we are here. We are one day late, but the show will go on, and in Washougal, which is, by the way, one of the most difficult tracks of the year due to the surface, the ruts, the shadows, it is gnarly. It's a somewhat local one for me because I'm a West Coast guy, I raced there my whole life, and that track is gnarly, but not to Tom Vial, who was 1.7 seconds faster than everybody in qualifying. He was 1.6 last week in Millville, 1.7 in Washougal, that's out of control. And in the 450 class, Hunter Lawrence is just not giving in. He's not giving up. He was your fastest in qualifying. That's a good sign for him, but they've got a race. So let's take it to the gate and drop it. <laughs> 250 Moto One, sponsored by Racetech. All right, 250 Moto Number One, Levi Kitchen. I'm looking at you, bro. You won last week. One, one. Now it's hometown race. Let's back that thing up and get that whole shot. But he is nowhere to be found. He's buried outside of the top 15. Instead, it's Tom Vial and Hayden Deegan out front. You know what? I'm here for it. This is the 250 Supercross battle and rivalry that never really blossomed in the summer. They came in pretty hot, had a couple battles, but the next thing you know, Deegan's got a huge points lead and hasn't really felt like a rivalry. But you put them one two at Washougal in a race where they both kind of need it. And uh, yeah, I'm here for it. I'm moving up to the front of my seat, ready for a good battle. And then Hayden Deegan decides to dump it for what seems like the 10th time in a row. And instead of challenging Tom Vial for the lead, now he's in a battle for a second, third, fourth, and fifth, trying to make his way back up to the front. Uh, but that's a missed opportunity right there. Tom Vial now gone. You got Ryder D out front. Look, he's a West Coast hard pack kid. I'm just going to say it. He needs a good ride. He's been actually riding pretty well all season. Just hasn't been able to finish. So the score on paper doesn't really match, I think, what the effort's been. But a good race like this, out front checking from the field is exactly what he needs. He looks good in that bright orange gear too. I like that look too, it stood out pretty good in the trees. Uh, but Ryder D looking good early in Moto1. Tom Vial, great opportunity to clean this up, man. I feel like he's just been a carburetor that's not jetted right. You know, he's been fast, he's had good starts, he's been aggressive, but then there's falls and tip overs. It's like the pilot jet's rich and the main jet's lean. The bike's running, but she ain't running right. That's what it's felt like for Tom Vial. But this moto, with a little bit of a lead, no real pressure behind you, and probably a lot of emotional motivation, yeah, this is a moto to get back on track, and he's doing it now. Then you got the battle between Casey Cochran and Levi Kitchen outside of the top 10. And look, that's the 250 class for you. Last week, they're battling for the win. This week, they're outside of the top 10. And for Cochran, I'm kind of okay with that. All right, he's a rookie. He's going to be a little all over the place. But for Levi... Dude, you went 1-1 one, one last week. You can't do this. When you're an elite guy and you're considered one of the elites in the class, you can't have a fall off the next moto like this. So, Kitchen, I'm I'm bummed for you. I'm a little bummed at you. Can't back it up like that, man. I was hoping for a back-to-back. -back. Chance Hymas riding through the pain. He's only doing this for championship points. Look, if he gets second in points, I'm sure there's some kind of financial kicker in the contract. That's how most of these things are worked. So, for him, he's out there suffering through the pain of that ankle. All to stay in range. Look, a couple weeks off, you come back at Unadilla and you make a run at second in the points. So that is why he's out there giving it his all. Shouldn't even be racing. But he's inside the top 10. Nice work by Chance Hymas. Late in the moto, Joe Shimoda makes the pass on Ryder Dean. You know what? I would have liked to seen Joe up front early in this one. I think Tom Vial, Hayden Deegan, and Joe Shimoda could have put on a show. Uh, but unfortunately for Shimoda, not the best of starts, but a solid ride up to third. But Man, I wanted to see that battle. And I think on this track, he could have given them all they could handle, but he's got to get that start. The start that Tom Vial did get, and it was a great ride for him. He's going to go on and get the win. He needed that more than anybody. And Hayden Deegan, look, big picture, you pulled away in the points again somehow. Like, even when you lose, you win. But man, it's got to sting that, that little tip over. You know, th those little falls are costing you. Moto wins, overall wins. You still got the second moto today, but I'm looking at that first moto fall, and I, I'll bet you that one stings, especially when it's Tom Vial of all people who benefit. On to Moto2. 250 Moto2, sponsored by Scott USA. All right, it's rematch time between Hayden Deegan and Tom Vial. Boys, come on. 
put on a show. We need 35 minutes of bar bang in action between the two of you. Tom Vial does grab the whole shot. Hayden Deegan, super aggressive on the first lap, looking for a way around. He knows that if he gets out front, he can check on this dude. But unfortunately, Vial does hold him up the hill and takes the lead. Levi Kitchen with the crazy move early on Jalik's full. I think he got the memo that he needs to go. And for Levi Kitchen, look, it's been a breakout season. I mean, Supercross was a breakout season. Outdoors a little less, a little meh. But overall, 2024 has been pretty good for Kitchen. I still think he's a piece or two away from being a true title contender. That's evident. Uh, but 2025, maybe the most dangerous, the most lethal dude going into next season. Uh, I like the signs that I saw from him today, bouncing back in the second moto early. But unfortunately, Joe Shimoda is uh, on his way, and he's a little bit faster on this day And what could have been. That's all I got to say is what could have been. I think this was a day Joe Shimoda could have won. He was fast. He looked connected to the ground with the motorcycle, but unfortunately not the best of starts. So he's on his way to another third place finish with the aggressive pass on Levi Kitchen. And the pass for the lead comes somewhat early by Hayden Deegan, who executed perfectly the left, the right, the left. Everything had to be exact to make that pass. Of course, Tom Viel does leave the door open a bit, but for Hayden, Perfect execution gets the job done. Then he goes absolutely ham for a lap to pull away from Tom Vial. And I'm thinking, this dude revs the bike so much. He's on a hard pack, slick track. How is this working? Well, it's because there's a lot of talent underneath that. He's not just a bulldog that just bangs off everything. I mean, he does that, I think, for fun more than anything. But the dude is really technical and really tactical on the motorcycle, too. So he may race like a bulldog, but he rides with some very specific attention. And that's why he's able to ride like that on a track like this uh, with that riding style. The TV crew looking for some fun. They find Ty Masterpool outside of the top 10. I didn't think he would be great on this track, but this is a little worse than I thought. He ends up getting pretty tired late in the race. Casey Cochran getting on that TV. I told you once. Once you get on the podium, they're looking for you. And how about Dylan Schwartz? All right, Dylan Schwartz, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to take a leap. I'm going to overreact. This dude's going to get a fill-in ride one of these summers for one of these factory teams, and he's going to have a breakout summer. The dude is underrated outdoors. He just pushes and keeps grinding, making passes late, and he's going to get a shot someday. Just book that. He's going to get a shot, and the dude's going to break out one of these summers. Nice work by Ryder Francisco to get up front again with back-to-back -back top five finishes and a top five overall, battling late with Joey Savacci. And when the checkers flew, it was Hayden Deegan who got the win, and he did it in a dominating way. He's good at Washougal, and he needed a win like that just to kind of go into the break and say, you know what, I'm the guy. Just a little reminder for all of you. And for Tom Vial, this was good for him, too, going into the break. You needed to have a one-two day. I mean, you got the moto win, all right? I would be very grateful with that. Bummer second moto. You wish would have held on, but take it, bro. Take it to the break. Nice little reset. Come out swinging at Unadilla while Shugel was a good day for Tom Vial. 450 Moto One, sponsored by Mika Metals. All right, 450 Moto Number One on the gate. Hunter Lawrence, fastest in qualifying. Let's get this win. Let's flip the script. But when the gate goes down, it's Aaron Plessinger who grabs the whole shot. And let me just tell you right now, Washougal is brutal. The dirt, the roost, the bullets. If you're Aaron Plessinger, you are loving life because you got a moto opportunity or a moto win opportunity, I should say, right in front of you. But you're also not getting absolutely pelted by bullets. So congratulations, AP. You're the only one not hurting on lap one, and he is gone. Jason Anderson with the aggressive move on Hunter Lawrence on the first lap and good heads up riding by Hunter Lawrence. If he's any further into the back of Anderson, he's down and probably back in like 30th again, eating that roost for 30 minutes. So for Hunter Lawrence, tough to lose the pass right there, but also good heads up ride to stay off the ground. And this is the bummer part for Hunter, not for AP who's gone, but Chase Sexton goes down and that's the kind of action Hunter Lawrence needs, but he's not up front again. He's now in a battle and AP's the one pulling away. Chase Sexton puts the bike on the ground. He's giving you boys a chance, but then comes the absolute rampage of Chase Sexton. He goes by Jason Anderson using every inch of the track to make the move. And Hunter Lawrence obviously gets the memo and says, I gotta go. I can still beat this guy. He makes the move on. Justin Cooper. He's trying to sprint away, but Chase Sexton is right there to make the pass on Justin Cooper. So now it's Hunter Lawrence, Chase Sexton trying to run down the cowboy, and Hunter tucks the front. I just got to say, look, look, maybe it's a Honda thing. Maybe it's a Honda thing, but Hunter tucked the front, and Chase was able to go by him, and now he's got clear sailing at his teammate Aaron Plessinger. Chase Sexton makes his way to the back of AP7, who makes a big mistake, goes wide, comes in at a weird angle, and stalls the bike, gives up the lead, barely. I mean, he almost held on, but Sexton goes by him and takes the lead and I'm just thinking man 
This is like Detroit, but in moto. He's out on the ground, but the same kind of thing. I feel so bad. But Chase Sexton would go on and get the win. AP's right there, just behind him a couple spots. Sexton, though, that's six straight moto wins. He's doing it with that exact same formula every time. And for AP7, bro, you're going to get one of these, all right? You're going to get one. Just keep hole shot, keep sprinting. It is going to work out. 450 Moto 2, sponsored by Guts Racing. All right, so let's be honest. In Moto 1, Chase had a little bit of help, okay? Hunter Lawrence goes down. Aaron Plessinger stalls it. I still think Chase probably ends up winning that moto, but let's be honest, he had a little help. So can he win Moto 2 straight up with no issues? Gate goes down. Hunter Lawrence and Justin Cooper, the rookies, get out front early, and this is the rookie revenge moto for both these boys up front. But Jason Anderson had other plans. This man with the gutsiest move from out to in crosses, passes both these dudes on the opening lap. And I'm thinking maybe he's the one who's going to beat Chase Sexton. He's got the clear track, no roost, and he is on his way. Chase Sexton makes a move on Justin Cooper real early in the moto. I think he didn't want to wait around this time and risk it going late. So he was on the move early and chasing after Hunter Lawrence. And when he got to him, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you I watched it five times. I watched it five times back. That pass sequence, the way he did that, the way he executed that, that was absolutely incredible, absolutely phenomenal. If you are a young kid out there watching, you need to watch that over and over and over. That's a clinic. It's all about line choice, moving around and not being stuck to one line, going out to end and making the move. That was incredible. Shout out to Hunter Lawrence on the race craft to cover his inside on Aaron Plessinger. That's the line that Chase Sexton used a lap before, but unfortunately, Hunter was going backwards. AP was going forward, so it didn't matter. He makes the move up the inside and AP is now on his way to the front. Hunter Lawrence, unfortunately, on his way to the back. Again, a clinic. Pull out your notepad, pull out your pen, kids. Watch this pass by Chase Sexton on Jason Anderson. Just goes around the outside. Look, find a line. Go look for it. You find it, rip it, and he ends up making the pass using it. So I, I, that's textbook passing by Chase Sexton again in Moto2. And Chase would go on to win a very easy moto, and I'll just ask the question, can he win out? Can he win the final six motos of the year? That would be 13 straight to close the season. That's pretty wild. I don't think anyone expected that coming in, but now the points lead's pretty big. So I think we're all on board with the idea that Chase Sexton's gonna be the champion, but my question is, can he win out? 13 straight. That would be incredible and unexpected and would deserve a huge congratulations. So Chase Sexton, six to go.